I'm what is known as a physics education researcher. I study how people learn physics, why people don't learn physics, and I really just work to point out the consequences of what happens in and outside the science classroom. So I guess it really boils down to being an educational activist, somebody who tries to institute change in education. And activism requires a kind of a courage, which I define as taking matters in your own hands with the naive belief that it might make a difference. I actually became an educational activist in high school by accident. I went to a high school in New Mexico, which was mostly Hispanic, had about a 64% graduation rate, and most of the kids, like me, had parents who didn't get to go to college. I never thought much about that because I loved learning and I was really good at math. I was the top of my pre-calculus class. I don't think I looked like the calculus student, though. I had big hair. I was a chola, a chicana, and a heavy metal head. I think that the teachers noticed this also because they would say things like, you have to learn this to get a good job. Science is not for everybody. And I said, can't I just learn this because it's bitchin', because it's worth learning? And it was then that I realized that there was a lack of respect for me, a human life, and what I might have to offer a discipline like a math or a science. And there was a lack of respect for those disciplines and what they could have to offer the quality of a human life. That narrative followed me, because later in high school, the career counselor came up and said, we're going to help you. You're going to go to the career and technical education program so you could learn a skill to get a good job. I said, can I still take the calculus? They said, you won't need calculus. You'll take business math. And it took every bit of courage I had to say no. Then I won't go. I had to advocate for myself, not even knowing if I could. You're not going to take me away from the one thing that I love. And it was then that I got this overwhelming feeling of empowerment. And I used to run around and tell everybody, I'm going to be the leader of the revolution in education. Not really knowing what that meant, but knowing revolution meant change and knowing that something had to change. I also figured I was going to have to figure out how to go to college which wasn't that hard because I had a lot of money saved up from working in my dad's grocery store for 30 hours a week since I was in middle school. So I majored in math and I ultimately got a NASA Minority Scholarship. But it wasn't until my junior year that I realized I had to take a core course in science and I end up in a physics class. Before that, I didn't even know what physics was. I thought I was going to be taking a class on the human body, but it turned out that it was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. It was like math with glitter on top. I remember describing it, and it answered so many questions that I always had, but it also allowed me to ask questions that I didn't even know people could ask. I loved it, and I changed my major to it, but I still felt a little ripped off that I'm a junior in college, and this is the first time hearing of this stuff. And there was a professor who really believed in me. He um, told me, you have to work in my lab. You've got to get research experience. You have to work in my lab. And I said, no can do. I work 30 hours a week at the grocery store. So he took matters in his own hands with the naive belief that it might make a difference. And he sent, essentially, an application for me to a research experience for undergraduates in San Diego. The next thing I knew, I had a bachelor's degree in physics in one hand and a plane ticket to San Diego in the other. And I was headed to the Institute of Geophysics and Planetary Physics to study research for one month. Well, when I was there, the minority recruiter for UCSD found me, and he said, you got to go to grad school. I said, grad school? What's that? Didn't I just graduate? He says, no, you got to get a PhD. He, as a black man to a Hispanic woman, he said, you're a part of the conspiracy. Unexpected people who can make a change. you got to go to grad school. And so we filled out the applications, and the next thing I know, I didn't leave in one month. I left five years later with a PhD in physics education research in one hand and a plane ticket to Colorado in the other to start my new job as a professor of physics education research at, at the University of Colorado Boulder. One of the first things I did there was I taught this class called Physics for Elementary Teachers. And those elementary teachers, they taught me 
that the kids in the elementary schools were being denied access to science. And I thought, man, they're getting ripped off just like I was. And so we found a way to sneak it in in the after school program. We would have these students collect data and then use their own hearts and minds to try to explain the world around them. One of the activities, it had a, um, they would roll a car down a ramp and then they would measure the distance the car went. Then they'd increase the height of the ramp and measure the distance the car went. Essentially, these third graders were forming a mathematical relationship between ramp height and the distance the car traveled. They loved it, especially Jacqueline. They're in the pink. She said, I've never done this before. And I said, well, you've probably played with cars and ramps. What you haven't done is systematically collected the data, written it down, and then try to use your own mind to make sense of it. It's science. It's physics. And with that, her face lit up with a new understanding. She said, you mean the tingles on the back of my neck can be gotten by rolling a car down a ramp and making sense of the world? I said, yes. It's learning, and it's your privilege. I did get this overwhelming sense that maybe I can make a difference. And so I got to work. And I began to work with elementary teachers, middle school teachers, high school teachers, and college professors to try to create learning environments to connect students' sense of self with those disciplines. Teaching students how to become expert learners rather than just expert knowers and helping students learn to advocate for themselves through science rather than in spite of it. And it works. In our data, we're finding that students in these classes are saying things like, we used to be gullible before this class when the teacher just told us, but now evidence has our backs. And in some of our bilingual high schools where students are learning English the same time they're learning physics, we're finding that the non-native English-speaking women are outperforming everybody. Why? Because when you value sense-making over answer-making, you give more people an opportunity to show you just how much they can do. So we put this model in the universities, where undergraduate learning assistants, not teaching assistants, learning assistants, work on the instructional team with the lead faculty member to implement the course. They break down power structures so that more students have voice in their own academic affairs, and it works. In classes like calculus, chemistry, and physics that have high failure rates, we're finding that we're decreasing that failure rate by about 60% for students who've interacted with the learning assistant. And so the learning assistant model got the American Physical Society Award for Excellence in Physics Education. And I was recently elected fellow of the American Physical Society. And now I'm being asked to give talks all over the place to governors, to physicists, and all over the world. But the talk I remember the most was right on my own campus at CU Boulder to, for the I Have a Dream Foundation. The audience, it were elementary students, middle school students, and high school students that were just like me. Their backgrounds were so much like mine. They even looked like me. And I remember one girl in the first row, I could swear it was my cousin. But uh, after my talk, that young lady that caught my eye came up to me. And she said, do you remember me? I'm Jacqueline. You taught me physics in third grade. I said, how are you doing? She said, I just got accepted to college and I'm majoring in physics. And I said, of course you are, because that's what people like us do. In high school, I became an accidental activist. I found myself having to fight for the right, which really was a privilege to learn for the sake of learning. And what I know now is that if you take matters in your own hands with the naive belief that you might make a difference, even in your own life, you might just end up making a difference in the lives of many. So now our programs are all over the world, which means that there's possibly a whole bunch of Jacqueline's out there reminding us of the consequences of the messages that we give in and outside of the science classroom. Students who learn to advocate for themselves through evidence are in a better position to work their way through racism, sexism, anti-intellectualism, or any other form of oppression. They take matters in their own hands. They become the revolution in education. Thank you.